welcome to season three of the Lifestyle Chase, and I'm your host, Chris Little. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. To help this podcast grow, please share it on social media, rate five stars, tell your friends, and check out the past 140 episodes and counting. You can follow me on Instagram at Christian Little and at The Lifestyle Chase. Thanks for listening. Let's get started. All right, so welcome to the Lifestyle Chase. I am joined by return guest Katie St. Clair. The last time she was on the show was May 25th, 2020, and the time has flown by. Um, she's wow. also had her wonderful husband on, on the show. So if people want to do a deep dive on the St. Clair family, um, they can certainly do that here on the Lifestyle Chase. So with all that out of the way, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me on. I didn't realize, so it's been a little over a year now. And I was just telling him because we weren't recording, but I was saying to Chris, like, I cannot believe how many episodes he's done. It's amazing to see the commitment and just watch your um, podcast grow. Well, like uh, a big thing for me is like, sometimes I don't even realize how many episodes I get through in a year. And so somebody actually asked me and I looked at it and I was like, I think I probably average about like 60 to 70 per year. Wow. And so it, it's Great. just cool, like the amount of value that I get from like having these open conversations with so many different people, because I have some people come back to the show, but I also have a lot of different people on the show. So I've probably interviewed maybe between 130, 150 different people. Wow. Which is a lot of people. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so before we dive too far into this, what I've noticed when I watch the analytics on podcasts is sometimes people only listen to the, like the first five minutes and then they take off. There's a program that you're putting out that I want to uh, shed some light on before we dive into the episode, Empowered Performance. Um, so I genuinely want as many people to have their eyes on empowered performance as possible. You just recently put out a really cool hype video, so that definitely uh, gets my vote. Uh, but just to tell people who know nothing about empowered performance, what is it all about? Awesome. Well, thanks for that. Um, I Empowered performance is sort of my baby. <laughs> I created it out of a, a true passion for this industry and wanting to really um, allow females, specifically now males are included as well, but to allow females to really up their game in the industry by providing as much current information as I possibly could. So I'm sort of a continuing ed junkie and I take a lot of courses, but I also work full time as a trainer and um, I have... Um, coached for 22 years, somewhere in the realm of just training or performance. And so it's sort of my vision of human movement. I wouldn't say I'm, I don't give like a specific, this is how you do things, but I teach overviews of content that can be, that's very principle based and can allow people to use whatever their knowledge base already is to kind of enhance and improve their training, uh, therapy, strength coaching, you know, it's kind of all movement professionals, but basically it's a 12 week mentorship. Um, we go through each week, we meet online on Zoom, we have a Slack channel, we can communicate, they can ask me questions um, throughout it. Um, we just, we do everything, guest speakers, uh, case studies. And um, it's just built this wonderful community. There are almost 100 people in the membership now that have completed Empowered Performance, and then they're allowed to sign up for the membership where we continue to evolve and grow together, which is really cool. Um, and so I'm just over the moon about it. I feel so incredibly lucky that I have this in my life, and it's like my number one priority. So that's probably way too much, but that's what <laughs> you could tell I'm passionate about it. So anyway, that's EP and it's on, um, actually I had a pre-sale, so I won't open up the regular sale for, uh, another two weeks and then, um, that'll be it. And I filled up the pre-sale, so I don't really have a ton of spots left, just 20. So that's that. All good. I try to limit it. Um, I know a lot of people don't, but I think I go by what 
I think I'm capable of managing in terms of question and answer and all of that based on what I've seen in the past. So, well, and I mean, everything about that makes sense. And from my experience, like a person might hear about a program and then like half a year will go by and then they're ready to kind of like yeah. take the leap. So it's kind of cool to get things on people's radar and let it brew for a bit. Um, one thing that I've noticed in the past is it's just like a person, like we get in our own way. So a person gets this idea that they're going to do something and then they put it off, they put it off, they put it off. Um, and oftentimes it takes like a special catalyst to make it happen. Uh, like from your past experiences with all the, the participants, like what is the catalyst that connects the dots? Like what gets a person into the program where they would have otherwise made an excuse? Yeah. So that's a good question. Obviously, it's probably somewhat varied, but I think ultimately people are wanting to have this experience that sort of allows them to feel renewed. Like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go training on Monday morning because I have all this new information and I'm just freaking excited to use it. Like, that's what Con Ed to me that I fell in love with. Like not all courses are like that. I'm sure you've taken many. So have I, that it was like, wah, wah, don't really know how useful that was or, you know, um, but there are a lot that I've just had that connection and been like, Oh, I'm so excited. Like I want to know more. And so I think, I hope that that message comes across to people. A, I do want them to be ready. I want them to be able to commit because I want them to ask questions, be on the calls, like try to, integrate themselves into it because I think that's the best learning experience. Um, you know, I don't want them, it's not a pre-recorded course. I don't want them to just sign up and that's it. And I have no idea if they even understood the content. Like I, I truly want them to learn it, you know? And um, yeah. So um, I, I guess I would say they're just needing a spark, like something new that's going to not necessarily set them apart, but just allow them to think creatively and critically and um, feel like they're owning their own business, you know, their own ability to help another human. Well, I think that's a common emotion to have for people in this industry, just kind of like feeling stagnant or feeling the need for like, as you say, a spark or just something that uh, uh, lights a fire under their butt, like, uh, that's a, a pretty common expression that I use the whole lighting a fire, but essentially it's like in this industry, we have a lot of passionate people and we're all human as well. So like when we lose touch with why we are so passionate about what we're, what we're doing, we need to kind of lean on other people. We need to lean on the experiences of the more experienced, or we need to, uh, um, support our peers, et cetera. Um, with all the time that has passed since your last appearance, I can only imagine that you've had to to lean on some peers and, and seek inspiration from other people and et cetera, et cetera. Are there like maybe a couple moments that kind of stood out to you that you can kind of reflect on right now? Um, yes. So I have a huge moment that um, was, I didn't even know it was going to be an issue until I kind of, made the decision, which I had been battling the decision to have men in EP for a while. And it wasn't that nothing wrong with men. I love men. I love my husband. I just wanted to create a different sort of space for females. And I wanted it to be uh, very supportive in its nature. Um, so anyway, I battled with this decision for a while. Like I reached out to my uh, membership, I would ask them, like, what do you guys think, you know, and because I also wanted to respect that they were part of something and I owe it to them to make sure that they feel comfortable with the decision too, if that makes sense. Like, I know it's my business, but I don't know, they've helped make it what it is. So um, I finally decided, you know what, men need this information too. And also I would, it would make me sad if there was a woman out there that my son could get information from and he couldn't just because he was a man or does that make sense? Like I, I was feeling like this is kind of off and, and for men to hear from women because our bodies are different and be able to learn all about the pelvic floor stuff. Cause we get dive really deep into that and hear us on the calls and we talk about it for real, you know, like, like 
I'm constipated all the time because of my rectal prolapse. Like these are things that happen to us. And, and to have their ears in that was my hope was that it would just really shed some light, but also was frightening to me. And, and it was also frightening because of my own ego, like me sitting back and telling myself the shoulds or what I maybe am not good enough for, or people might judge me because I don't know enough or, and, and, you know, I've always seen men is up here in this industry and they sort of are the leaders and the thought creators and the um, course you know, monitors and all of those things and females, you don't see it as much in strength and conditioning, you know? And so there was a lot of my ego that I had to check. So I ended up, this is so wild. Um, but one of the women in EP is an osteopath in the UK. She's just outside of London and kind of just through the membership, I realized that she also does a sort of therapy called transactional analysis. And the idea behind it or mainly what she does is she helps people understand their role as leaders and how to understand how our life circumstances as children, even up into adulthood have affected the way that we are able to, the way we communicate, the way we feel about ourselves, the way our egos get in the way, all of those things and sort of help make sure that for me, that my vision that I originally set for EP, I'm still keeping those values regardless of who comes into the group. Because if I set the tone and I lead with value, my value and my vision for the for the entire course, then that will remain and I will I will attract those men who respect that vision and those values, right? Um, and women, right? So basically I started working with her and not kidding you, I was in like a puddle of tears every single week. <laughs> Because so much came up for me in terms, I've, I had a little bit of a tough childhood growing up and um, things that I didn't even realize were happening. And through kind of going through that process, I've really felt like I'm starting to own truly who I am and like feel very confident in my ability to teach and offer up what I can and also be willing to check my ego and say, I don't know the answer, but I'll check into it and find out. And that's okay to say that in these instances, I don't have to know everything. Um, and so it's been wonderful. So I think that's probably one of the most, the most impactful things this year since, um, you know, all this started, I guess over two years ago now, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it, it's cool that you kind of uh, reflected on all of that because I think a lot of uh, like people don't wish to kind of like, as you say, puddle of tears, people don't want to be in that position. Um, but I think a, probably a lot of people were in, in different capacities or in different contexts. And that's where growth happens. Like that's where we kind of take those leaps that we need to take. That's where we make the progress that we like that we long for like we talk about how uh people feel like they need that spark and in order to get that spark sometimes you need well like you need the perspective from somebody else and you need to kind of like uh lean into your stuff like it might be from years and years ago or it might be something recent that you just weren't aware of um something that uh, got my attention was you talked about ego and i like that because I wanted to talk about that today um, and I'll kind of segue into it just like I was usually when I'm interviewing somebody, I'll listen to a previous episode that they were on just to kind of get myself in the groove. And so I was checking out your episode with Gavin McHale and uh, ego came up in that one and it really got me thinking and I'll lead by kind of like sharing some insight from myself. I recently owned up to the fact that I have like an ego, like I, I can say it, I um, I put myself first in some scenarios in the sense that like, I'm going to do this no matter what it takes. I, um, sometimes put the horse blinders on when it comes to seeing other opportunities. And like, if a, if a person who's known me my whole life was to describe me, it just comes out in uh, very stubborn tendencies. Like I will do things the difficult way just simply because of what my ego leads me to do. And being aware of that can be a game changer. Like, 
it's not like uh, a flaw to admit that we have certain traits and that they're probably never going to go away. Um, it, it is actually kind of like stepping into our power. Like for me to admit, I, I have an ego, um, can help me to realize when I need to check myself before I make things so difficult on myself that I'm never going to get anywhere. Like just uh, continually trying the same thing and having the same result and just scratching my head and wondering, well, why isn't it working kind of thing. Um, when I talk about all of that stuff, like have you ever found yourself in a situation where you tried the same thing repeatedly and it didn't work and then finally you you had something come up where you tried something different and it just completely uh, took you aback kind of thing? Um, I mean, it happens all the time in terms of what I do in my profession, movement wise. Um, cause sometimes, you know, I followed a lot of systems out there that have been extremely helpful to me. And usually they have sort of a step-by-step -step process or like an algorithm or some side of sort of like, if this, then that, and that's really great. Cause it gives you a lens for understanding concepts, but what it doesn't do is make you step back out of that and say, there is a possibility that this is not working for this person. And so can I create a new thought around this by processing what they're saying, but then taking little baby steps backwards and understanding and sort of working through, it's like working through a word problem or working through a calculus problem where you have to like actually know these logical steps and they have to be solidified in your brain so that you can step back and be like, well, what, what is another alternative here? What, what could not be working for this person? Why am I not getting the changes I want? Um, and so that happens quite a bit actually. And in EP, I really encourage all of my mentees to think that way. Like, just because I told you this is a typical asymmetrical pattern does not mean always. This person, they that might not work for them, and you've got to strategize on why it doesn't, or just take a completely different approach. Maybe things aren't changing because their emotional life needs addressing. Maybe you need to refer out to somebody else so they can calm their nervous system so that the things you're trying to do actually work. Maybe they just need to strength train and stop thinking about what's going on. Like, there's so many possibilities um, so yeah. And I'm trying to think if I've like repeatedly done stuff for sure, like, especially throughout my career where I just, you know, I don't know, I, I would say I threw darts a lot and sometimes we have to throw darts. Like that's definitely part of the process, but it was like, oh, I'll just try this and see if it works like less of a process. And it didn't and throw another dart, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I can't say I can think of any instance where I've just like repeatedly done something over and over again. Um, I'm, I'm very like creative minded. I'm definitely, I guess, right brained. I, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Right brain. I think so. Yeah. 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 So I tend to kind of think outside the box anyway, which makes me shift my perspective a lot, but I've been like that my whole life, you know? Well, I think that's an important character trait to have. And like, even if a person can't think of stuff on the spot, there's a pretty good chance that uh, they're going to like start looking for those situations. Like they might look at like, okay, like, am I aware of like my biases? Like, am, who am I um, learning from? What am I trying? Like, when I'm looking at opportunities and seeing um, setbacks and failures, am I trying all the opportunities or do I have a lens that only shows me three out of five kind of thing? Because it's like oftentimes a person can kind of get stuck in their echo chamber or stuck in just like their, their view in that given season of their life. And mm -hmm. by being open-minded or by being open to feedback or sometimes constructive criticism, it allows us to seek out opportunities in other directions that could work. Kind of like uh, the best analogy I can think of is like a young kid in high school going to like the job fair, um, thinking that they're going to be like an engineer and then talking to like a realtor and realizing that maybe they like uh, just talking and selling houses instead of um, excelling in math class, et cetera, kind of thing. But, um, 
with all of that uh, long-winded ramble out of the way, um, when it came to kind of balancing out your energy, I uh, noticed that you you took some time to kind of like recharge over the summer. Like, what what was that mm-hmm. like for you? Is that the first time you've done that in a while, or is that something you've been able to structure for a while? No, that was the first time I've done that, and it was amazing. <laughs> And I'm going to continue to do it. Um, there's a couple of reasons. I think I'm a better human overall if I give myself that space. I will say, I think that if you are going to go full tilt into something and you want it to be a success, you might have to negate some of your, I mean, I hate to say this, but your own needs um, for a little bit. There, You can do it without, but I, I struggle to, to see it um, come to fruition, but it might be worth it. But then once you get to a place where you're solid in whatever your business or whatever you're trying to do, then it's time to kind of take that, take the blinders off, take a nap, (laughs) think about something else than work and like reconnect with other parts of you that you also enjoy. And, um, that allows me personally, actually, to think more critically and creatively and get outside the box more and then be a better educator. So it was really good. I took the whole summer off, um, not from training. I, I, I see probably about 10 hours a week of clients right now because I'm doing so much online. Then I have my membership, but that's all I did this summer. And, you know, my son being in summer camps, we're kind of juggling a lot of that you know, time that I have and everything. So, um, it was great. Like we went on a few vacations. I got to get started on this big house project that we have going on. And, um, yeah, and I needed to decompress big time. When you started the whole decompression process, were there any things that kind of came up for you or things that you realized or learned throughout, uh, going through that? Well, I learned that my go hard, get it done is pretty, it can be off the charts. <laughs> uh, it creates somebody who's impatient with others, which I can be. Um, mostly that would probably be with my husband. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> but, you know, like I have this mentality of like, just get it done. Like, don't stop until it's done. And um so in order to, to get to the place where I even knew that I needed the time off, I needed to recognize that mentality in myself, understand where it was coming from, why I was doing that so that I could create empathy for myself and let go. Because if I didn't understand why I was doing it, I could just easily kind of be like, why am I doing this? I mean, it's just so stupid. Like I just need to stop doing it, but that's not going to help create change. What's going to help create change is understanding these deep feelings inside of me that make me want to do that and just recognizing them and allowing myself to feel what that feels like, you know, like it's sad that I feel that way that I have to keep going like that. Like it makes me sad that for myself, you know, and I cried over it and realized like, and so I think there's also something about having a child because you think, well, what if they felt that way in their self? I would never want my child to feel like they're always having to go, go, go and get it done and never stop. You know what I mean? And so I was able to create a lot of empathy around that just through recognizing where it came from. I think that's like the true, the true catalyst for change in somebody's life. Um, so, Yeah. Well, I mean, it's cool that you reflected on that and just like having um, someone else in your life to uh, create that that empathy sort of response. And like for me, it's like my nieces often come to mind, like when I'm thinking about uh, just uh, how to act in certain situations and how to um, present myself and how to go into the world like how I carry myself kind of thing. Like they're, they're kind of my go-tos cause I'm just, I'm a bachelor. So I got to figure out, uh, my, my people that, that are going to come top of mind and like my siblings too, and my parents and friends and all that stuff. But it's just like, otherwise we kind of get stuck in our own world and we don't know anything else otherwise. And, um, something else that I've learned this past year is cause 
I, I set this standard for myself that when I tell somebody else what that standard is, they are able to bluntly tell me it's unrealistic, not because they don't believe in me, but because I've created something that is impossible, like almost subconsciously on purpose. And in knowing that, I started to realize for myself that I needed to um, be a little bit quicker to uh, take the win kind of thing. Like not wait until I, I met this unrealistic standard, but to realize mm. when I had actually made like a, a fairly significant achievement and give myself credit for that. Because otherwise right. I would just like essentially burn out or be feeling defeated like all the time or um, how I would carry myself would be influenced by that feeling or that lack of, of success kind of thing. And so that's been a very valuable um, point of reflection for me in realizing that uh, the things that I was setting myself up to do were not possible, like just simply mm. not possible, no matter who I was or how smart I could be, just out of reach. Um, with regards to things like that, what are three wins that you've had like since we last spoke? Like three things that kind of the jump out to you that we haven't talked about yet that kind of like that you're really proud of that kind of bring you joy this space <laughs> so during covid obviously i lost all of my in-person clients i used to train like 30 hours a week um downtown at a nice really nice facility downtown that i loved it's part of the medical university um so it's funny how something like this could have made us pull the trigger, but having this space is amazing. Like my own office and a gym and a place where I can see clients and with or without a pandemic, we can wear masks if we want, if we don't, like depending on how what's going on. And also just like, it's at my house, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so that's a huge win for this year. Um, for me and Jason, because Jason sees, sees patients out of here. And we kind of juggle back and forth a little bit. Um, and then what's another win from this year? Gosh, there's a lot. Um, definitely seeing the membership grow and be and watching the women in the membership start their own courses and their own. I mean, that's, I freaking love that. Like if you are in there, I always say like, if anybody wants to give a lecture or presentation um, to EP, please let me know. I'd love to have you because I want that. I want other women to like take their knowledge and present and teach. And I, there's been a handful of women that have gone on to do more than a handful that now have their own courses, which is really, really satisfying for me. It's, probably my, my favorite thing about it. Um, and then a third, I think going back to what I was saying about that empathy for myself and slowing down is just feeling like I'm a little more present in myself again and enjoying like life outside of work. So getting together with friends, going on vacations with friends, you know, just being with my son, that sort of thing, and not so hyper focused on my career. So, yeah, those are the three top things. Awesome. Well, I mean, like, I I had a similar experience with with the whole like uh, things shutting down and sort of like losing clients. Essentially, like for me, um, as far as in person business goes, like uh, I'm basically building from the ground up again. Like I had uh, oh. one client that that stuck around through the entire thing and a lot of people moved or there's just a lot going on. And I've uh, basically strived to be as understanding and empathetic as possible because like these people, like they are essentially family. And so if I can stay connected with them, that's like a win for me. But yeah. as a result, like uh, I started growing online and kind of by happy accident. Right. And it's just like, I guess the pressure forced me to, to, to do it is kind of like uh, the burn the boats 
phrase, expression, analogy kind of thing. Like, uh, we're not going to do the things that we truly would would benefit us because of our biases. Like, we're not going to do it unless we need to, unless it's like sink or swim. Like, what are you going to do? Mm. Um, I with, think you are not alone. In yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> with, well, and you're in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys had a much harder lockdown than we did. Well, it's... It, is all relative to the individual because like for me living in a, a condo that's like about uh, 600 square feet um mm -hmm. there was really not much that i could do to pivot and some some people like there was little stipulations within like the uh restrictions where people could go and train people in their house and stuff and i just kind of took a hard stance i wasn't going to do that i knew that i'd make it i knew it would, i would pay for it but i knew that i'd make it if i just kind of stuck to my guns um and despite it all like i actually got like uh well i got a lot of referrals from other trainers and i did some virtual training but then i also um started working with kids like i did some oh. group virtual stuff with kids just on a like one-off kind of contract basis i ended up going out to a kids camp and working with them there and i realized that that is kind of like i i really perform well there um with my background as like a camp counselor um and just grew up as the the kid of two teachers my sister-in-law is a teacher and i was like okay well i just realized uh, my wheelhouse is actually working with kids and now like that's so cool it's it's unreal how we realize things that we are good at when people force us to be uncomfortable. Um, and most often, the qualities that are our strengths, we don't know them. The people in our lives know them. Like I didn't I didn't sign up for those those roles. It was people that have known me for the last five years, followed me on social media, listened to my podcast, read my long posts. And they knew that I'd be be fit for it kind of thing. And with that out of the way, like I talk about where people recognize my strengths. How about you? Like within your community of people, your friends, your family, like when has been a strength when has there been a time when a strength has been revealed in you that you didn't know about, but that uh, somebody in your support network kind of pointed out? Um <laughs> member. Uh, one of the women in the in the membership that has helped me some in the back end of my business, and um, I hire her to do some things for me. She's real smart. Um, works for Formula One, so she was like in tech, and then she decided she she just loves the body and she wanted to learn. She wasn't even a trainer, and she took my course and really understood all the content. It was crazy. I was like, awesome, good for you. So anyway, I reached out to her to help me with my website. But at one point, Ina said to me, she was like where did you learn how to teach and lecture? Like, what did you do to figure out how to say things to people? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> she, goes, she was like, I just never learned from somebody the way that you explain things and speak. It seems like you've taken a course to learn it. And I was like, I have no idea. Like, isn't that weird that I never thought about it? In fact, I sort of sometimes think I come off very unprofessional because I'm like, I try to make the lectures feel as if like we're having a cup of coffee, not I'm standing above you lecturing over you. Um, it's a, that heterarchical vibe is sort of like a big thing to me. Um, so I think it just was out of, I, I don't know. So I guess Ina in a way pointed that out to me, but I didn't like really realize that I was doing that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so that is probably one thing. Um, Jill points things out to me that I don't notice all the time. Uh, for those listening, Jill is one of my best friends and um, sort of colleague because we talk about all this funny movement stuff that's going on. And um, we're so different, you know, like there are, she, I see my weaknesses through her and I see my strengths through her. Like it's both sides of the coin. Like if I get trolled, which I get trolled a lot, surprisingly, it's really strange. I'm like, I'm just giving free content. Can you please stop trolling me? But <laughs> like I get it. I didn't say it exactly right. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not body shaming. I swear Like I'm the last person who cares what somebody looks like. Um, but if I get trolled and this just happened last week, I had a couple people come after me for a post I made because 
I guess I was body shaming, but I didn't realize I was or whatever. And instead of reaching out just privately, they needed to make, you know, it in my message or in my feed or whatever. Anyway, I cry. So I get sad and I let it affect me way too much. And I feel like, oh my gosh, I like should have thought of that. I feel terrible, but they're like, you know, and why would they hate on me so much? How come they couldn't just send me a private message? Like I go through that stuff. Cause like I get a private message. Whereas Jill is like, she's like a shark. She's like, <laughs> she'll be like, oh no, she didn't. I'm going to tell her what's up. <laughs> You know what I mean? But that's a strength of hers because she's able to like, not let it emotionally affect her, but just like, no, like you, that's not okay. You don't just do that. You know what I mean? Um, But as far as a strength, she would say that, and she always says this, that I just have this capacity to like, if somebody asks me the same question, 10 different ways, because they need 10 different explanations for in an answer that I will answer every single question. I will stay up late on Slack and make sure that every question for that day gets answered. If not the very next morning, like I'm very like, I like the questions. It's okay. If you don't get it, I want you to keep asking me because I really want you to learn. And she's like, (laughs) my response when people ask me the same thing is like, I just said it. I'm not going to say it again. So it's kind of funny because I see both, you know what I mean? But that's probably a strength of mine, the ability to like stay, like I don't get upset or anything. Like that doesn't bother me. I'm not like, oh, this is so annoying, I guess. Well, I think that's cool. And just as an aside, Jill has also been on the podcast. So anybody (laughs) that wants to dive down the rabbit hole there, they can go back (laughs) through the episodes. Basically, everybody, everybody's been on the show. Not everybody, because some people are going to be like, well, not me, but like a lot of people (laughs) have been on the show. So people can kind of it's that's what I want to encourage with uh, listeners is because it's benefited me. Like when I listen to somebody else's podcast and then they start name dropping, I start looking up who these other people are because like it's been made clear to me that there's some kind of an influence, some kind of a connection. And it's kind of like the volume of people that you talk to and learn from and uh, get feedback from um, is going to impact you in ways that you would never expect. Similar to like where we don't know what's going to come from advice from somebody until we act on that advice or until we actually hear it and accept it and make adjustments and adaptations, et cetera. Um, you talked about social media and I have to agree. Like sometimes people it's like, it's like they could never picture themselves saying to that, that thing that they're saying to a person in person, like, let's say if every comment a person made on Instagram had to be delivered face to face, Like, don't you think that would kind of change what people said? Because I don't think people would have nearly as much courage to say the things that they say or to present it in the way that they present it. And like something that I've thought about recently is like if anybody ever just really like ruffles my feathers, I'll just send them a link to Zoom and uh, they can try it again on a video call and just see if they deliver it the same way kind of thing. But yeah, like what how in the past have you bounced back from getting criticism in your comments or just feedback that just, you didn't need the feedback kind of thing? Um, I mean, eventually it just goes away. Like those feelings subside of, uh, you know, I've had a few instances throughout the past year and a half that really, I was like, wow, like, this is crazy. Like the, all that this whole group unfollowed me because a parent, I don't know, I guess, because they, I I have no idea. It's hard to, it's hard to know. And so you can't even question that. You just kind of have to move on. And for a while I let it affect me because they were people that I respected and peers of mine. And I thought, well, why? Like, you know, it seems strange that, um, you would feel something negative towards me because I don't think I've, garnered that, you know, and if you do, then maybe you should talk to me about it or whatever. But um, anyway, it's silly stuff too. When I look at it, it's like teenage drama to me because I, you know, ultimately I'm like, I am a mom. I I am 42 years old. I don't have time for this. Um, You know, there's so much negativity in the world, period. Like we have so much 
conflict politically, religiously, like all of these things, you know, freaking wear masks, don't wear masks, get vaccinated. Like it's like constant. And I just feel like having more negativity in this space is if at this point, I just unfollow people. Like if you're really negative, unfollow or mute or whatever. I just, I can't, I can't keep listening to it. And so for me, it's better for my own health if I don't have to scroll past it because even that moment of seeing it for a second and scrolling past is not, if it brings about like anything less than joy when I see it, I'm done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think uh, something that I've learned just through past experiences and through all the things that I do um, is you kind of have to like set some ground rules for yourself. And I'll kind of give some context. Like I, I know how it feels to have like an entire group of people unfollow. Like my background is I have been a very like passionate participant of like the spin community, gone to like several classes in a week and through social media, I've seen 30 people at a time unfollow me like in huge waves and whether it be because I went to a different studio or something got misunderstood or like there's so much that's missing in social media that we Mm -hmm. have to remind ourselves that like like the way I see it is when I'm reflecting on these situations this person does not know who I am if they did um they would see a deeper connection If they don't see a deeper connection, like I shouldn't carry that weight and I need to move on. And we got to take care of ourselves. We got to make sure that our ship floats and we're not going to be for everyone. Just point blank. People, some people haven't done the inner work. Some people are going to be projecting some stuff. Um, And the the quicker we know that, especially in this industry and any industry, every industry is going to get competitive. I'm sure realtors deal with this. I'm sure like doctors deal with this etc etc but like setting those like ground rules i find is quite helpful and then just as you say just kind of like creating the environment where you do best in um still having people that think differently but if people are just like blatantly like just negative and just bringing down your energy to the point where you feel like you're carrying a weight we we have control over a few things we can we can mute we can uh, restrict our time on the app etc for me part of my work is a i'm a social media contractor and so i do content for about 10 different businesses outside of the fitness industry so sometimes i'm kind of stuck in it but Mm -hmm. i'm still able to create the boundaries that i'll like work for a pre pre pre-established amount of time on each post and then step away. And I find the awareness and the structure there will be helpful for people. And especially in this evolving world where people have to have a presence on social media in some, in some capacities, like if, if our gyms were to close again, like it or not, you'd have to have some online presence kind of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. Just to have that structure, I think is important for people. So I hope people kind of like, listen to that advice and um, make sure that they're always learning, but they're, they're also taking care of their self and not overthinking the follows and the unfollows and the this and the that, because most of the time it's like, we don't even have to leave our house and we'll ruffle somebody's feathers. Like we could <laughs> stay in bed yeah. all day and not post anything and have unfollows. Right. So it's, yeah. it's always, it's most often something that's going on that has nothing to do with us. And when we remind ourselves of that, um, we're going to be able to focus on the things that uh, help us the most. Sure, sure. Yeah, so, I think that's really true because it is, it's easy to get caught up in it, you know. And so the, the more you can lessen the possibility of getting caught up in it, the better. <laughs> absolutely. Um, who has been someone that's really like caught you off guard with cool content or, or stuff that uplifts you? And it could be, it could be a dog account for all I care, but like, what is an account (laughs) that, uh, you really like following these days? Oh, good question. Um, man, I don't know. I mean, I think about it like, 
I don't know that I can, I always love Stacey Shadler. I just love her posts. <laughs> she makes me laugh so hard and she's super real. Like I like not to use the word real, but like <laughs> she, her reels are real too. Like they're just funny. Um, Allison Helms, she is Allison Marie, I think is her Instagram, but um, she does these really funny reels that are about running, but it's really smart content. So I love her Instagram. Um, trying to think who else that David Gray always has really good stuff. Um, obviously, I love his uh, educational stuff. Um, let's see, Allison Tini. She's got great. I just love their positive vibe and all of that. Um, gosh, there's so many. That's a good <laughs> list though. Like that, that's yeah. where we can kind of control some things. Like when we're thinking about what's not like, what's not our vibe or what's not helping us um, is kind of like when we're coaching people, like if you're going to take something away, you better have something to put in its place sort of thing. Or yeah. sometimes if you put something in place, it doesn't feel like anybody's taking anything away. You just no longer have time for the things that hold you mm -hmm. back. And for myself, like what I found, um, I'm constantly connecting with new people and stuff. And it's easiest to move forward and to grow and to stay afloat when I am looking for the opportunities that wouldn't exist if I wasn't, if I didn't have my eyes open kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. when I have the, uh, the mission to make more connections, uh, uplifting, positive, hardworking, strong people kind of like fall into my lap. And so I think that that's sort of like a mindset that if people adopt it, social media won't be nearly as difficult and people will not have as many bones to pick because it's kind of like when you are promoting your program empowered performance and you're being yourself and you're connecting with people and you're, you're showing up authentically. doesn't matter if they're guys or girls, um, you're getting the right people to come to you. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like my, my lens on social media is that I don't think that I'll, I'll be a very popular person on social media, but the people that are connecting with me are there for a reason. Like, they know everything about me, like everything reasonable about me kind of thing. And they, they have a why and they won't forget their why on a day when they might not agree with what I have to say kind of thing. Because they'll be able to bring it back to that, that core reason. And I kind of transfer that over to clients, etc. But I, I'm almost taken over the podcast. So I want to turn the table over to you. There's something I have each of my guests do as of late and it is basically... Um, to put out a challenge to the audience, something that you may not have mentioned yet, but something that you genuinely think would change the trajectory of their day or their week. So whenever you're ready, you're just going to be like, your challenge for the day is, and just put it out there. Okay. Let me think about this. Hmm. Your challenge for the day is to go on a walk and pay attention to all the little things. Look up, look at the trees, think about how beautiful they are, look at the roof line of a house, look at and connect yourself to your environment outside. Like try to spend some time um, just walking without a podcast on. <laughs> without music, without anything, just, you know, being in yourself and, and noticing what you notice. I think that's important because like, like we kind of talked about the, the situations where we kind of reflected on things and it might have uh, brought a lot of emotion. If you don't reflect, you're not going to get there. Like if you don't take time to just like stop, like something I've been doing lately is actually making time to uh, use a meditation app or just lay down and breathe, like not yeah. be thinking about what's next, but simply dedicate 10 minutes to like slowing down my heart rate, 
um, being in silence, looking up at the ceiling and just kind of reflecting and reflecting on like the winds as we talked about and reflecting yep. on um, what I might not be aware of that could be holding me back. Like these things that are, that our friends and our community kind of help us with to uh, shed light on the opportunities that are there when we're feeling stagnant, et cetera. Yep. It's so important. Um, and I say that because I need to do the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's always good to slow down. So I think you have a newsletter that you put out. Is that uh, correct? Are you still doing newsletters? Yeah. So um, I'm trying, I, I've never done them because, well, I'm not even calling it a newsletter because that puts too much pressure that I got to do this big, huge thing, you know, like a proper newsletter. And I put too much pressure on myself already. So every couple of weeks I just send an, an informational email that hopefully has some content in it that you can use to help you become a better mover, feel better in your body. Um, and, you know, it could be something that takes five minutes, could be 20 minutes. I usually will have videos of me talking in it because, again, I'm letting myself off the hook. It's almost easier for me to just talk naturally than it is to write this long email. So mm -hmm. <laughs> um, usually there's video and just, you know, me um, explaining something. So, so how do people sign up for that? Is it a link in the bio kind of thing on your social media or? Um, right now, my social media has the empowered performance thing on it um, just because I'm in sales. But just go to my website. It, that'll take you to my website. It's Katie St. Clair Fitness. And there's a newsletter sign up. Um, and there's also, I think I have some free workouts on there under Wednesday workouts. Like if you want to just get a couple of free um, recorded workouts that I've done live, that's on there too. Perfect. And with that out of the way, I just wanted to say thanks so much for, for coming back on the show. It's been cool to catch up and reconnect after like pretty much over a year. I know. It's awesome. Thank you so much for having me.